Well, as you can see, two courts in action. We've got three more matches to come. Women's doubles up next, then men's singles. And then, as I say, men's doubles to finish off this afternoon's play. Well, I can bring you right up to date. You can see the other court in action there. The two-time defending champion, Simon Abel, took the opening game 21-14. Chen Xiaoqie took the second by the same margin, and you can see the celebrations because Simon Awal has just taken the third and deciding game, 21-17. So the defending champion, well, she obviously likes playing here in Indonesia because that her third consecutive final in the women's singles. For the crowd await the next players on court and as I was saying for us on centre court it is women's doubles and Japan Mizuki Fuji and Alreka Kakiwa the number four seeds up against a pair Ian that have been absolutely outstanding Vita Marissa who of course has won this title before she's twice won the women's doubles here but with different partners, two different partners. Well, she's playing this year with Nadia Malati. And they really have been in great form, as I say. They beat the number two seeds in the second round, Chen Wensing and Chen Yu Chin, in two straight games. And then for the second time in two weeks, they beat Chin Yi Hui and Wang Pei Ti in yesterday's quarterfinals. But of course more Indonesians about to come onto court who are independent players yes it's a trend in Indonesia at the moment but, uh, it's interesting I think some of the Indonesian players have found a little bit more motivation by taking responsibility for their own for their own projects going out and training the clubs having a little bit more influence on a little bit more influence on what they do, what their own training is, etc. And some of them have really been inspired by that, I think, having that extra responsibility. Yeah. And I think Marissa's a good example of that. Yes, indeed. And she's now playing mixed doubles on the world tour with Nova Widianto. They played the 2004 Olympics together, if I remember correctly. Quarter finalists, and now they're back together again as independent players. But whether they will be able to play enough tournaments and get their ranking high enough to qualify for the Olympic Games remains to be seen but the one thing certain they'll be giving it every effort there's Zhang Ning reigning Olympic women's singles champion coaching the women's singles players and I'm quite certain she's been eagerly watching the match on the adjoining courts with Cheng Chao Chie and Simon Awal <laughs> So the Indonesians, Vita Marissa and Nadia Malati. Welcome to into the arena. They're playing against the number four seeds from Japan, Mizuki Fuji and Oreka Kakiwa. crowd on their feet to welcome the home players mascots you can see in the background there urging the fans on and they're doing a marvelous job my goodness it must be warm in those costumes i don't think i'd fancy wearing one of those in this stadium yeah, it's very hot humid conditions here all adds to the occasion So Schmitz is a busy man. He umpired the first match. Double. Back to umpire this women's double racket as well. You stop here. Good. Wait, that to sir. Who will miss it? Mizuki. 
So the toss of the coin complete. And there's Mizuki Fuji, 22 years of age. Not the tallest of badminton players, 1 meter 60. And she was great friends and classmates with the darling of Japanese table tennis, Ai Fukuhara, who's been up at number seven in the world rankings. There's our court officials. Marcel Schmidt, as I say, from Switzerland, and Gilles Cave from France. Or was up in the world rankings after this week, I'm certain of that. But the number four seeds from Japan, 19 and 8 win loss record for the year. That converts into three finals, having won the German Open. Of course, their big, big result was reaching the final of the All England Championships. Also reached the final in India. And as you can see here in Indonesia, it's been pushed the full distance in both their previous two matches. Easy first round against the Australians, but against their teammates yesterday, Matsuo and Nato, dropped the opening game, as indeed they did against the Hong Kong pair. So Vita Marissa and Nadia Malati. Vita Marissa, vastly experienced, 30 years of age playing her first Indonesian Open with her partner of today, who's 24. Melati, gold medalist at the World Student Championships back in 2006 in the women's doubles, with Mathis Lara. Uh, it's not the best win-loss record for the year, is it? Three and five. Quarter-final last week in Singapore. I must stress that that win-loss record doesn't take into account their matches here in Ladies Indonesia. Time. And there, as I was saying earlier on, beat the number two seeds Chen Wen Sing and Chen Yu Chin in the second round. And a tough quarter-final yesterday against the Malaysians Chin Yu Kui and Wong Pei Ti. But it is nice to see the Malaysians back on court because Wong Pei Ti has had to have knee surgery. And she's back on court and getting back to fitness. She was telling me she's not 100%, but absolutely delighted to be back. She says she's getting there. And we certainly wish her well. So, Vita Marissa. Been in four previous Indonesian Open finals. Won two women's doubles. And lost in the final of two mixed doubles with Nova Widianto back in... 2001 Ladies and gentlemen, and 2002. on my left, Mizuki Fuji Laika Kakiwa Japan. On my right, Vita Marisa Nadia Melati Indonesia. Vita Marisa to serve to Mizuki Fuji. Level play. Well, the Indonesians, Vita Marissa and Nuria Melati, maybe the underdogs here on paper. Only 18 in the world rankings. They've moved up six places from last week and they're bound to go up a fair few places after this week's performance as well. But the way they've been playing throughout the tournament here, plus the home support. One, I think love. they've got every chance. Well, we were talking a little bit before that Marissa's really enjoying a badminton again now. She's an independent player, deciding a little bit more influence on her own training, on her Service own partners over. and everything. One, oh. She's just played with such great motivation and uh, enjoyment this week. It's been very noticeable in this doubles run. And a partner, not a lot of experience, but she pours that heart and soul into every point. She's a real worker on court, as we're seeing here. And uh, they've proved a very tricky combination. Throw in a little bit of home support, and yet yeah, I agree with you, Jill, they have got a chance here. Time is over, two, one. Yeah, of course, the Japanese pair 
despite being number four in the world, they're still very young, 22 and 21. I think we're going to see a lot of those types of runners in this match. Over the Japanese oh. are going to feel they'll have a physical advantage in this match and they're going to play with good margins and try and move their opponents around. The danger for them is Marissa, with all of her experience, will be really very, very desperate to try and reduce the length of the rallies, mix it up, use a lot of variety. So we're going to see a good tactical battle. Real indecision from the most experienced player on court. Three. To Marissa, thought it was going to go out, was going to leave it, decided to play it, but by the time she made that decision, it was too late. There, yeah, but makes amends the very next rally. Well, that's good, good return. Get in the net position where she's so good Three, using a mixed four. experience. The ominous sign was, though, it took her five shots to put it away. Gone along off the back line. Service over. Four, three. Yes, the moment you lose your angle when you put power behind the shuttle from this end, the shuttle just floats out to the back of the court. Much quicker. As the stadium's filled up, I think it's got a little bit quicker from the first match that we saw today. So Marissa, a bit of advice four, to a younger four. partner. That's a good return. She is vastly experienced. This is actually her eighth semi-final in this particular tournament. Turn, giving herself time to get into position, over, five, oh. making the most of the interception opportunity. And that's the combination. There's a serving, trying to get hold of that net position, and a partner providing the power from the rear court. Six, five. Good channeled attack down the centre. Making sure the shuttle comes back to a partner, past the partner. Yeah, good judgment, was long. Seven, five. Oh, that's beautiful. What a drop shot. Yeah. Super play. A nice variety as well. She's been attacking the centre with some power, some pace. And using the drop to the side of the court as variety really caught the Japanese defence off guard there. bit rattled by the occasion, you'd have to say, making one or two un uncharacteristic errors. Yeah, and I wonder if they're... Uh, they are very young, as I've already pointed out, on the occasion. And, and when they reached the All England final, and I thought they were shell-shocked in that, lost out to Wang Xiaoli and Yu Yang, 21-2, 21-9. I just wonder if you're 
Absolutely right, Ian. Cajun getting to them once again. Has pushed wide. That's another example. Yeah, that's a run of seven straight points for the Indonesians. And they were gifted a number of those. I was saying at the beginning of the game, I thought we'd see a lot of long rallies. Japanese players playing with good margins, but I think they've got a little bit rattled, they're a little bit nervous, and Marissa's been very dominant on the front court, and the Japanese have just got very nervous, I feel. Forcing a little bit on return, one or two direct mistakes, which is very un-Japanese, I'd have to say. There's also a question mark as to whether Malati can keep her nerve because she's got to put the enormity of this match out of her mind because this is by far and away the, the, probably the biggest match of her life. Yes, and she got very, very nervous 11, in yesterday's quarter-final towards the end. And she'll maybe have learned a lesson from that. She's very happy to hit as many shots as it takes from the rear court. Mixing the attack nicely, hitting off defence. And the Japanese know that Marissa's waiting well, for any chances five. on the forecourt. Signs of frustration from the coaches as well. Good judgments. reading the play very well, stepping out when the interception opportunity arrived, looking full advantage. Yeah, and I think the Japanese pair are getting more and more nervous. Yes, they're frozen a little bit, haven't they? Feet aren't moving. They look very planted on their defensive positions, showing no intent to hit and move forward or be aggressive in defence. Very passive at the moment. As you say, Jim, very reminiscent of that All England final so yeah. far. Six, fifteen. Wide. And they need a little run of points here. The number four seeds from Japan just to settle their nerves. The danger lifting from this near side of the court as we look now. Oh, tactically, that's an interesting point as well, Jill, because if the Indonesians win from the more difficult end, that will put even more pressure on the Japanese players. Yes, indeed. I'm sure all these things are on the Japanese minds at the moment. Yeah, we don't 
you can see Kikiwa really hunting the shuttle at the net like that. That's good to see. Oh, great return. Just put in a huge work rate, and I do wonder whether she's got the stamina to if the Take Japanese pair me. start defending and defending and defending, whether she'll have the stamina to keep smashing and smashing and smashing. Well, there's defence and defence, she's not really being moved around the rear court, I'd have to say, the Japanese just getting it back really, it's not very constructive in defence. Saying it, Kikiwa, not the most confident player in the front court. We see here, she didn't need a big swing, but that's what she used. And lost control. Yes, and the body language of the Japanese players after that rally very concerning and the Japanese coach knows that so come on just keep moving keep playing yourself in well, again very static in defense there playing round the feet rather than moving the feet get into a more aggressive position about stamina whether the young Indonesian girl's got the stamina to get through with all the work she's gonna have to do from the rear court but if they get through this first game easily that will make the task much simpler for her. Yeah. Too flat. 11, 19. Yeah, the Indonesian coach is just saying yeah. Come on, mate. Service fault called. Your cabbe or front saying racket not facing in a downward direction. Game point. That's front serve. It's nine. Three points to the Indonesians. Service over, 12 20. What a return and serve, that's brilliant. What a lovely way to close out the opening game. First game won by Vita Marisa, Nadia Melati, 21-12. Uh, she turned the racket face at the last moment to play it across court. And the opening game is theirs. It's the unseeded combination, 21-12 against the number four seeds from Japan. Yeah, net winners, overhead winners for the Indonesians there. Fully in control, you'd have to say, so far. Lots and lots of false errors from the Japanese. You'd have to say they're looking very stressed again. And now they're going to have to deal with the quicker end as well. It's going to be interesting to see how they react here. So giving 
probably a bit as much instruction as the coaches were giving. Japanese coach looking very anxious. Yeah. Fourth one, 20 seconds. Fourth one, 20 so seconds. You'd have to say in that first game, Kakiwa really never found any rhythm at all. Didn't really get her legs moving early on in the rally, in, early on in the game, and things went from bad to worse. Second game. Love all. Play. So having taken the first 21 12. All right, there we go again. Melissa all over that net position. Chinese have got to be better than that on return One, if we're going to get into yeah. this game. The people were so was over. backing off from One, the net. Two. Yeah, well, the Japanese, rightly so, are just stopped because there's somebody in the crowd just behind the court that's taking photographs with a flash camera. And it's very distracting for the players when that happens. Yeah, and I can see he's put his camera up again. That's going to flash off in a minute. Yeah, well taken. It's a good return and serve. Service over. Three, one. Service over, two, three. No service short. Service over. The front service line. Four, two. Yeah, looking for a very tight serve. They know that Marissa's been very aggressive on return of serve so far. Puts the pressure on the server. Channeled attack again. Malati obliging with the centre smash. Shuffle popping up to Marissa on the front court. No mistake. Five, two. Very slight confusion between the two Indonesian girls. Service over, three, five. Yeah, Marissa attempted, she saw it was short, just couldn't quite get behind the shuttle in time. A little bit off balance when she was hitting that. Who's going to land in? Oh, no, it's not, it's out. Was drifting back all the time. <laughs> Came back from that half a meter out as it lost speed, it was coming back. It was going well out at the start. Kakikiwa was waiting, committed to her forehand defence. Aimed towards That's her bad. left hip. Three. She's 
turns, looking for forehand. It. Wasn't expecting the cross court, was looking Four, for the straight. Seven. In she goes, that was the right movement forward, Vita. but she just came a little too Vita. far on the straight. Wonderful cross court block on the defence from Vita Marissa. Time is over. But as you say, Eight, what great placement four. on the final smash. That's up. Takes it early but doesn't try and hit it too hard and guides it down the line. Yeah. Every time they get Vita Marissa involved in the net. It really is putting so much pressure Nine, on the Japanese four. opponents. Japanese have changed really after the first game. They're still very much happy to stand in defence and really just retrieve the shuttle. They really need to be a little bit more proactive than that if they're going to turn this round. Newton Russ is all over them in the front court. It's the lob defensive return of serve, and it's not good enough. Well. A seven-point advantage at the mid-game interval. Here in the second game, and it was a six-point advantage in the first. But they really are playing the best badminton that I've ever seen them play as a pair. Of course, we've known for a good ten years how good Vita Marissa is. She's such a versatile player. She's looking very anxious Fourth indeed. Vita Morissa, I remember she has won three Japanese Open Mixed Doubles titles with three Thank different partners. She's already won two Indonesian women's doubles titles with two different partners. And like she's to do it with a third partner. Well, that's fascinating, Ian. The Japanese players, Reika Kakiwa, was getting a severe talking to from one coach. The other player was back on court. Well, Fuji, Fuji just walked away four. in the end. The body language Play. is very poor at the moment. It's a more positive that return of serve, and Five, immediately you see 11. the result. It puts you in a better position on the front court. We've got a lot of work left to do to turn this round. Golden opportunity. Six, eleven. Hit long. Way out of position. Yeah, it was long. the net court to which she apologizes well we've got to ride your luck yeah but again these pair lifted twice 
Oh, still the same place, you haven't had to move for it. It's been a good drop, even if it oh. hasn't hit the tape. play this well in a long time, Lisa Marissa. 46. Time is over. 7-14. Smash goes long of the back line. Ten, just sense that maybe the tide is beginning to turn. Yeah, but it's interesting. It's turning with Indonesian mistakes. It's not really that the Japanese have taken no. hold of the game. Show boating. Service over. She left the 15, to turn their defensive play into attack, just content to lift and lift, and in the end it seemed inevitable that the Indonesians would get through. 16, yep, they're 10. just hoping for a mistake rather than trying to actually take any initiative there. Started with just a lob return of serve, no aggressive attempt at all. Here we go again, lob return.
really good from Marissa. Chapmanese starting to just move the shuttle around a little bit more. It's still all defence, but Marissa stepping up and taking responsibility, reading the play really well, and that's a great interception down the line. Yeah, Chapmanese goal. Setting up in backhand defence, Marissa going down the line, finding the space on the forehand wing. Bit of experience from Marissa after that point as well, taking a break. And chance to talk to a partner. Nadia. Where the umpire trying to get Malati back on court. No, she has put in a terrific work rate. Jump smashes. Four points away from a place in the final. Oh, and that was a slightly tired looking reaction to me. Yeah, so that's well, not her forte 70. around the front of the court there. She went for it, but she's not quicker reactions as a partner. She is comfortable around that rear court. She's happy to run around all day, keep the shuttle coming down. Japanese making the error. Time is over. And we should be looking for a little set play here on this serve. Smash right in between the two Japanese players. 19 12. Just two points required. Now just the one. It's eight match points for the unseeded combination. But what a performance they put in all week. Victory this afternoon against number four seeds, Mazuka, Fuji and Oreka Kekiwa. Nadia Melati, 21 12. 21 12. 21 12. 21 12. For a pair, only ranked. 18 in the world. They have outclassed the world number four ranked pair in today's match. Helped, of course, by the home support. But quite frankly, they were magnificent. Vita Marissa played better badminton today than I've seen for some considerable time. The 30 year old really controlled the game and was absolutely outstanding. But that's to take nothing away from her partner, who really had the stamina. I question that, whether she'd have the physical ability to keep going with jump smash after jump smash. And she's proved that she did. And there we see Marissa's dominance in that front court, really the telling factor. 10 to 3 on net winners tells a story. Ably supported by a partner in the rear court with four smash winners. A very dominant performance in the end. Yeah, well, Vita Marissa leaves centre stage.
and she'll be in her fifth Indonesian Open final tomorrow. Third women's doubles. And here's an interesting statistic. Every time she's played a women's doubles final here, she's won. Never lost a women's doubles final to date. Rita Marissa. In a moment of victory. The disappointment for the world number fours and the joy for the Indonesian coaches. Well, although Handoyo wasn't terribly happy yesterday because, of course, he's also the coach to Taufik Hidayat when Hidayat lost to Peter Gaida. Well, what a thrilling match that was. Four different nations in the women's doubles semi-finals today but this one between the japanese pair and the indonesians was absolutely dominated by the indonesians Well, jubilant scenes at the end of that women's doubles. And that confirms that they will be in the final tomorrow. Vita Marissa and Nadia Malati unseeded at the start of the tournament, but they've had a wonderful tournament so far. Yet to know whether they'll play against the current world number ones, Wang Xiaoli and Yu Yang, or whether it'll be the Danes, Christina Peterson and or and Camilla Ruta Yul. Camilla Ruta Yul, of course, we saw in the first of our semi finals in the mixed doubles. And there's confirmation that she and her partner, Thomas Laybourne, lost that opening match against Indonesian opponents.